This is the BMW 520i Luxury. It's the lowest priced variant of the 5 Series. In this video, we'll review the car and we'll also talk about the perks and quirks of driving a BMW. So, without further ado, roll the intro. <laughs> I've owned a couple of BMWs now. Nothing as new or as expensive as this one, of course. I've had an E36. I've had an E39. And I'm currently daily driving an E90. In terms of design, they all follow the same formula. And the 520i doesn't stray too far away from that classic BMW formula. In fact, when you see it from the side, I think it looks pretty similar to my old E39 5 Series. You have a very long hood, you have short overhangs, and a long wheelbase. The new 5 Series though is a much larger car. It looks stately, it looks luxurious, especially in darker colors like this. At the front you have adaptive LED headlights. We used to call these angel eyes. Now they're called LED daytime running lights. I prefer the older designs which were more circular, but these new ones are not bad. It has active kidney grills, which open and close depending on whether the engine needs cooling or not. When the grill is closed, you get better aerodynamics, and also the engine gets to operating temperature faster. Uh, this luxury variant gets 18 inch wheels, while the M Sport variant gets 19s. At the back, you have these all red LED taillights. You have this interesting looking shoulder line. Uh, it starts at the fender, and then as you go to the door, you slowly see another shoulder line forming. And now you have two shoulder lines, and the top shoulder line goes around the window line and the bottom one connects with the taillight. Okay, so you have this aluminum accent over here and underneath there is a vent and that's a real air vent. Uh, you can see the tire through here. You also have air vents at the front. Um, you can see air passes through here from the front. The air coming from the front cools the brakes and then exits through here. Okay, so this is the 520i ski fob. To unlock the doors, you can just press this button. Or, as long as you have the key fob with you, you can just put your hand here, and the doors will automatically unlock. Now, to lock the doors again, just put your finger here. The 520i has soft closed doors, so you don't have to do anything as primitive as using force to close the door. You can open the trunk by using your foot. BMW doesn't change their design drastically over the years. They only update the design enough so that it looks current, but not so much that it makes the previous generations look old. That makes their design more or less timeless, unlike, say, an Accord, which changes its design completely every generation. Even the 10-year-old BMW can still look current. The 520i is a beautiful car that is very much capable of turning heads today, and probably 10 to 15 years from now. Okay, so this is the interior of the 520i. Now the 520i is the lowest priced variant of the 5 series, but looking at this interior, 
you don't get a base model vibe at all. We get a lot of high quality materials as you'd expect from BMW. Everything is soft touch. This is soft touch over here. Um, These are also soft touch. Almost everything is covered in leather, aluminum. You don't see any cheap, scratchy plastics here. Even for the hidden panels, they're also covered in soft touch materials. Even the lower part of the door sidings are soft padded. Both front seats are power adjustable. You can move the seats forward or back and you can adjust the recline angle. But there is no lumbar support adjustment. The higher trims have lumbar support adjustment. Over here you have two cup holders. They're pretty shallow. I wouldn't feel comfortable putting tall cups here. Aside from being shallow, the cup holders are also next to one USB port over here and one 12 volt outlet. Um, you have a lot of piano black surfaces here. Now a lot of reviewers don't like piano black plastics, but I don't really mind them. The higher trims of the 5 series have either aluminum or wood panels here. Okay, over here you have a split center armrest. Underneath you have one 12 volt outlet. Um, storage is not that impressive. Sorry. Not sure if that's normal, but it takes effort to close this. At least this side of the, of the armrest. Okay, one neat trick is that you can't control the infotainment screen by using hand gestures. For example, you can increase the volume by doing this. And you can decrease the volume by doing it in the other direction. You can change the station by doing this. And you can also use these controls over here to, um, to control the infotainment screen. This knob right here is touch sensitive. So let's say you want to search for a, for a location. Enter the destination. So let's say you want to do a quick, you want to, you want to input the destination. You can just uh, type it here. Let's say Trinoma. T R I I N O M Trinoma. A. It is pretty accurate. And then you also have controls here, and you can also use voice commands. The steering wheel is leather covered. Um, it has a nice girth to it, although it's not as thick as I would want. You have two person memory settings over here. So let's say if I press one, um, the car will automatically adjust the seat, the uh, steering wheel, and the side mirrors to my preferred settings. Speaking of the steering wheel, it is adjustable. Um, you can adjust the tilt and also the, it's also telescopic. So over here you have a fully electronic shifter. There is no mechanical linkage to the, to the transmission. So to put it in drive, you press this button and then you push down like so. Then to put it in reverse, push this button again and push it forward like so. And to put it in park, press this button. Now unlike most mechanical shifters, it always stays in the same position. Uh, it can also shift gears manually. You pull back to upshift and you push forward to downshift. You have three driving modes. You have Sport, Comfort, and Eco. And you have an electronic parking brake. So the instrument cluster is fully digital. Um, it changes depending on your uh, drive mode. Okay, these um, window controls are too far back. Um, I can't operate them without having to lift my wrist up, like so. The higher trims got a 360 camera, but this model doesn't. But you get sensors all around the car, as you can see. And it also doesn't get a sunroof. Uh, the upper trim variants get sunroofs. Okay, so I'm at the back seat now. Uh, legroom is quite plentiful. Headroom is also quite good. Over here you have aircon vents and you have controls for the aircon. Um, you have two zones here at the back and two at the front. You can adjust the temperature but there is only one adjustment for the fan speed. You have um, two 12 volt outlets here and some storage. Um, the rear sunshade is power operated. 
but these ones are manually operated like so you have some map pockets you have a foldable center armrest with cup holders okay so like a lot of BMWs that are rear wheel drive you have this large hump over here um, you can sit at the middle but your feet will have to be positioned like this what is it like living with a BMW so I'm talking from the vantage point of someone who's owned a couple of older BMWs and someone who's driven this brand new 5 series for a couple of days whether you have a new BMW or an older BMW I find that there are similarities in the experience number one uh, if you're single or if you like to pretend that you're single uh, this might be important uh, it adds a lot of boggy points and I think that goes without saying number two every time you drive a car it feels like an occasion Number three, you get a bit more respect on the road. Um, other drivers tend to give you a bit more space and they don't tailgate as much. And that's probably because they don't want to hit your car. Number four, and this might be related to number one, you get a bit more attention. And that's happened to me quite a lot while I was driving this car. People would not just look at the car, they would look at who's driving it. They don't call BMW the ultimate driving machine for nothing. Scotty Kilmer says that BMWs are money pits and I find that that's only partly true. Maintenance and parts cost a bit more than your average Japanese car but not as much as most people think and there are a lot of shops that specialize in BMWs which charge a lot less compared to the Casa. But once your car runs out of warranty uh, you can bring your car to these shops and you can save a lot of money and I find that for non-high performance models like this one, uh, engine reliability is about the same as most Japanese cars. Uh, number seven, your fingers don't feel as tired because unlike other drivers, you don't have to use your turn signals. That's a joke. Always use your turn signals, people. Okay, so this is the power plant of the 520i. It's a two liter twin turbocharged engine. It produces about 185 horsepower. And knowing BMW, their numbers are usually very conservative, so it's probably more than that. Um, as you can see, the engine is pushed back, and that is the case with a lot of BMWs. Uh, the front of the engine is over here, and it's about in line with the front axle. And that helps with the weight distribution of the car. The car's weight distribution is almost 50-50. 50, 50. 50 at the front and 50 at the back. Um, you have this bracing over here. Um, for additional chassis stiffness. The 520i has a very good balance of sportiness and comfort. <clears throat> Inside the car, you're well insulated from outside noise. The suspension feels compliant. It soaks up road imperfections really well, but it doesn't make the car wallowy in the corners. The engine only has about 190 horsepower but it feels more than that, considering the size of the car. It doesn't feel as light as my 3 Series, but for its size, it feels pretty agile. The 8-speed transmission feels responsive, and it quickly finds the gears that you want. In sport mode, throttle response sharpens. You give it 50% throttle, and you immediately get pushed back into your seat. Okay. The throttle response almost feels immediate. Also, in sport mode, the transmission holds onto the gears a little bit longer, and you get a bit more engine braking when you let off the gas. When you're doing U-turns, it doesn't take a lot of throttle input to get the rear end to use traction. 
if you have a heavy foot and you're not used to rear wheel drive, I would suggest that you don't turn traction control off. The car's weight distribution is almost 50-50. Now that's something that you won't get to appreciate while driving on straight roads like this. But when you're on the twisties, it should feel pretty neutral. Uh, it's, it's less likely to oversteer or understeer. If the car has an auto start stop function, when you're at a stoplight, the engine automatically turns off. And then it turns on again when you step on the gas. Thankfully, you can turn the feature off. Within five minutes of driving the car, I turned it off. It was too annoying and it caused the car to shudder when you're at a stoplight or when you had to move again. Fuel consumption is not bad for a car of this size. On the highway, it can get up to 18.9 kpl, and in traffic, you can get about 8 kpl. Steering feels precise, and it just has enough weight to it when you set it to sport mode. The 5 Series provides luxury, practicality, everyday usability, and good performance in one car. You get to enjoy driving while being pampered like a VIP. And you can get to bring your family with you. Here in the Philippines, the 5 Series sells between 4 million for this 520i to 7.4 million for the 730d Luxury. And then of course, there's the M5 which sells for almost 15 million pesos. These prices are a lot higher compared to US prices because of taxes. While the price of the 520i puts it above the reach of the average car buyer, compared to other Japanese luxury vehicles, it's actually pretty well priced. The 520i is less expensive than even the base model Land Cruiser. It's just a bit more expensive than the Nissan Patrol Royale and it's about the same price as a Toyota l With the 520i, you get a car that's a lot more fun to drive on the road and a badge with a 100-year pedigree that commands respect everywhere you go.